Yeah, like I said, I'm glad that, you, that you've joined us, and it is important to get the Word in you. It's important to continue to um, uh, fellowship in this way. And also, remember, you know, while we're not having the church service in the building, check up on each other. And, um, you know, just pray and pray in the Spirit, and the Lord will put someone in your mind, and um, you can uh, uh, pray for them and uh, call them if you, if you think it's necessary to, and uh, um, they'll be uh, happy that you did. And, uh, you know, what we always say here, a church that uh, uh, prays together stays Stays together together, right so that's important to know all right and so um this morning we will be having communion and so we're happy about that communion is very important yes this is something that jesus said that we are all to do we're to do it um um faithfully we are to do it in remembrance of jesus for all that he has done for us and so we're going to have communion. And uh, so go ahead and get your communion elements ready a while. You can use any kind of wafer, cracker, even bread, a little piece of bread. Um, you can get, uh, you can use grape juice, any type of juice, even water. You know, these things are just sim- symbolic of what the uh, um, actual uh the blood, the actual blood and actual body of Christ, they're, they're symbolic of it. And uh, it's important that, uh, um, that we understand that. Before we get into the communion, I'd like to um, just take a minute to pray over your needs. We know that uh, um, life goes on. And because life goes on, that means that there are needs that come about. Yes. And... Uh, um, it's inevitable. I mean, we, we don't live in heaven yet. We live in a planet with the curse on it. And so therefore we pray and we um, seek the Lord and, and uh, he answers our prayers. And so it's not a matter of trying to go through life without any trouble. It's a matter of what do you do when trouble comes? Yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. Do, what do you do? Do you crumble? Do you fold like a deck of cards? Or do you say, you know what? I'm going to uh, um, overcome. The Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. All that Christ has done for us. In James chapter 5, it says, Pray ye one for another that ye may be healed. The sincere heartfelt prayers of a righteous man is dynamic in power. And so um, this tells us as people in the church, that we are to pray for one another. And as we have a sincere, heartfelt prayer, it's dynamic in power. The word dynamic is the Greek word dunamis, which means, um, uh, it's where we get the word dynamite from. It's supernatural and an explosive force for God. And so that's why we pray. We've been a church for many, many years, and uh, um, I've seen God do tremendous things. Now, granted, what's going on out there in, in the world, I mean, it's with the pandemic and, and all these sort of things. Um, we've never encountered that before, but hey, those things don't change God. They don't change the truth of God's word. They don't change who we are in Christ. So we're going to plow through and, and overcome. And I know you're with me, Freedom in Christ Church, but it's so important that we stick together, we pray together, we believe together. And that, that allows God to move in our lives. Um, Sometimes you just got to get a little bit more bolder in your prayers when we're going through those situations, you know. We don't just sit by and say, okay, well, whatever comes my way, comes my way. No, we just get down in. That just helps us on our prayer life, you know. We just get a little bit more aggressive during those times. So, And that's the way we need to be for one another. Yes. <clears throat> That's a good word, aggressive. Leslie's been on that word, aggressive here. She was on it last week. And so, you know what that means? The Holy Spirit wants to um, continue to remind us. Yes. I, I do believe that a lot of Christians are passive. Yeah. You know, they're, they're just passive. They say, well, whatever happens will happen. Mm-hmm. Anything that comes in my life, good or bad, it's all part of God's master plan. I, I wouldn't have that view if yeah. I were you. Because not everything that comes into our life is 
part of God's plan. Right. Sickness and disease and, and, and trouble and depression, that's not God's plan for our life. Now, it doesn't mean that we're a terrible Christian if we have these things come into our life. It doesn't mean that we don't have faith. It means that we are to recognize the enemy and deal with it, the Bible quickly. says. Yep. The Bible says that God says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And so we, we don't want to um, um, be destroyed because we don't know what's going on around us. And so, but I was praying the other day and the Lord showed me our prayers as a church is, is sort of like a community garden. Um, there's been times in the past where people have asked or suggested that maybe someday the church will get a community garden. Yeah. Where people can plant things and uh, we can all partake of it. A physical garden, you know, whatever you want to plant. We're not much guard on the gardening yeah. end of things. <laughs> um, but uh, it's a good idea. We just never really ha have made it happen. But, you know, that's the way it is with, with prayer. And when you have need of things. You see, what we do at the church, we plant the word of God in the soil of the hearts of the people. There's a harvest field there of, of, of the word and faith and love, and it's in each and every one of us. And so when we pray, we pull out of that field. We take the harvest out of that field. Everything we've been believing for, everything that we sing when we get together, because we don't sing songs that, that aren't filled with faith, <coughs> all these things, we, we pull it out of our, our, our spiritual garden of our brothers and sisters, because it's in your heart. We've planted it in you. You've planted it in, in us. Yep. Uh, and so we're going to do that right now. We're going to pray and we're going to believe and trust the Lord. Leslie, do you want to read 1 Corinthians sure. 13? Yep, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. For by one spirit we are baptized into one body and have been made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. We have need of one another. God has placed every one of us in the body as it has pleased him. Amen. Amen. So this is, this is another scripture that just confirms. We are a, a community garden. We're, we can't escape one another. And we don't want to escape one another anyway, do we? We are put here for such a time as this. There are supernatural gifts, there's supernatural power, there's supernatural love in us as Freedom in Christ Church. And, and if you're listening now and, and you have a heart for our church and a heart for Leslie and I, you're in our family too. Yep. And so, but this prayer is powerful. So I want you to think about what's going on in your life and I just want you to give it to the Lord right now. If you believe that God is, is able, if you believe that Jesus is our healer, if you believe that, that healing belongs to you and deliverance and whatever else that you're going through, you know, you know God doesn't want you sad or depressed. That's right. And so we're going to pray about that. And, and God doesn't want you to have trouble in your marriage. Sometimes, um, Leslie and I, I think the, the biggest area that we talk to people mm -hmm. on is, is probably in marriages. Because life is hard sometimes. And, and sometimes in marriages, there's pressure. Well, God doesn't want you to go undergo that pressure either. He wants you to be free from it all. And so we are going to pray, we are going to believe, and God is going to do the rest. Are you ready to pray? And I just want to throw one thing in before he does pray. Um, the really awesome thing about today's message is on communion is it covers every single thing that he just touched on. Um, a lot of people don't understand communion and they think, oh, I'm not worthy enough to take that. You know, I've done too much wrong in my life. Because I remember I used to feel that way myself. But when I came to Freedom in Christ Church, and you know, when you come expecting, God's going to talk right to you. He's going to come right through the man of God or the woman of God who's talking. And um, so God has used my husband, he's my husband now, um, to talk right into my spirit and let me know that, hey, you are worthy because you know what? It's not about us anyhow. It's all about Jesus and what he's done for us. And that's what communion really represents. So it's for anybody who wants to partake yes. of him. So that's the awesome thing. I just wanted to That's a good that point. In. That's a good point. You know, that's why I'm glad Leslie's here with me. <laughs> you know, what you're seeing with Leslie and I right now, this is our natural element. This is how we do... Um, the large part of our ministry 
You know, when I'm behind the pulpit, that's just such a small part of what we actually do. And, and uh, um, but this is it. This is what we do together. We Two are better than one. <laughs> Amen. And the Bible says there's a great reward for our labor. One will put a thousand to flight. Two will put 10,000 to flight. And so we've well, had a good teacher. <laughs> all right. And we are going to pray. We're going to agree with you that we are the overcomers. Yes. Let's pray. Yes. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Yes. And I thank you, Lord, for each and every person, Lord, of this yes. church family. I thank you, Lord God, that we are the overcomers. No circumstance, no condition that we're going through in life can ever change the truth of your word. Mm -hmm. And it can never change who we are in Christ. That's right. And so, Lord, I, I thank you, Lord God, that one day Jesus is coming back for us all. And we're going to sail out of, he out of here. And, yes. and uh, we'll never... Um, encounter struggles and trials and tests and tribulations of this world but until that day we're going to fight like you said to do yes. we're going to fight the good fight of faith we're going to call things that are not as though they were yes, we're going to look at a, a, a situation that has um, things in it of the world and, and, and trying circumstances and we're going to look at that circumstances and we're going to speak the word mm -hmm. in that circumstance yes we're not going to talk about the problem we're going to speak Speak to the problem. And as we do, the word and the power of God will, will bring about our deliverance. Yes. Lord, that's just how it's going to be. That's what we believe and that's what we receive right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And so um, we are going to get into the lesson here for communion. And remember now, if you're just tuning in, um, go ahead and get your communion elements ready a while. It can be any kind of a wafer, a cracker, bread, um, grape juice, any kind of liquid, um, even water. They're, these things are symbols of, of the blood and the body of Christ. And so get yeah. those ready. And it does not matter. It does not matter that we're not in the same room. All we need to do is connect. Yes. Connect with our spirit. Connect with our faith. And as we do, God does the rest. Remember, we are pulling from our community garden right now. We're pulling out of the love and the faith that we have for one another. And faith works by love. And we're standing on the word. And so remember that. If you listen to this later, please do the communion. It doesn't yeah. matter if you listen to it uh, an hour from now or two days from now. Get your communion elements ready. Our God is bigger than time space. Space and, and, and distance, <laughs> he's bigger than it all. You know, the Bible says that the eyes of God go to and fro throughout the whole earth, and he's looking for hearts that are loyal to him. Yeah. Amen. And so if you do it with a good heart, you'll get the benefits from it. Okay, communion. Jesus is our healer. He has always been our healer. Now, God took care of the sin and the sickness problem when Jesus died on the cross. But even before Jesus came to die on the cross, he, Jesus has always been the answer. And so that's what I want to just lead you now down the road that, that before God formed the whole world, Jesus has always been the healer. He has always been the redeemer. That's why he is the unique, special son of God. And I'm going to explain that to you and show you where they had healing in the Old Covenant. Well, guess what? How much more do we have healing in the New Covenant? And so, go ahead, Leslie, if you'd like to, read 1 Peter 1, verse 18. Yep. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, like silver or gold, from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Okay, did you catch that? We were redeemed. This is Peter mm -hmm. looking back to the cross. See, that's what we have to understand. Some of the Bible in the Old Testament is looking towards the cross. Yep. The New Testament is looking back. We're in that group. We look back to the cross. And it says... That you were not redeemed with corruptible things. Which means God did not purchase us or redeem us with, with money. He did it with the precious blood 
of Jesus Christ. For he was the lamb without blemish and without spot. When Jesus hung on that cross, that's how God redeemed us. He not only redeemed us from, from uh, sin, the being lost in sin, he redeemed us from sickness. He redeemed us from disease. I want you to get this because that's what communion is all about here. A lot of times when people take communion, they only concentrate on the sin part. Thank God for the for forgiving and, and cleansing of sin. But in the redemptive work of Christ, he purchased our healing too. And, and by his stripes, we are healed. And his body was bruised and battered for us. And But what verse 20 says here is the main part. It says that Jesus was foreordained. Before the foundation of the world. Foreordained. That means before the world was even created, Jesus was already prepared by the Father to come and do all that he did. You can't catch God by surprise. He knew Adam and Eve were, were going to mess up, and he had Jesus waiting before he even formed the whole world. That's important. I, I like to say it this way. Jesus is sort of a big deal. Yeah. You know, I'm just being you know, silly here. And he is a big deal, but you know, a lot of times people don't realize he is a big, big, yes. big deal. That was God in the flesh that came and took our place on the cross. And when he did, we were redeemed or purchased from the hand of darkness, from the sin and sickness and disease of the world into the, as children of, of God. We have rights and privileges. It does not mean because we become a born again believer that we 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 cease to be in this world. No, we're going to be in this world, and we're going to have the the the, the trials and tests and tribulations. But when we when these things come, we got to know what what we who we are. Yeah, we got to remind ourselves. Wait a minute! Before the foundation of the world, Jesus was. Was, was slain as a spotless lamb. And he purchased these things for me, so I'm going to get what's mine. He loves us that much. It's so awesome to know. I mean, he had this all planned out in advance because he knew what was going to be happening, you know, in the future because he knows the future. Amen. Amen. And so in the old covenant, the forgiveness that they had, was, it was a covering of sin. Yeah. Their sins were covered every year by those animal sacrifices that they did in the temple. And so um, their deliverance and, and their healing, they had deliverance, they had healing, but it was on a, a promissory <laughs> note. In other words, they were healed and delivered and able to be in a covenant through Abraham on the promissory note that before the world was, was founded, Jesus was already slain. In the mind of God, Jesus was already the lamb that was slain. And so um, that's important. And if you want a, uh, another scripture to just verify um, that Jesus was slain before the foundation of the world, you can look up uh, uh, Revelation 13, 8. You can look that up later. And it says that Jesus is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. That's just a confirmation scripture. But I want to pump you up and realize that God has made provisions for us. He, he is um, not caught by surprise. And we just got to know who we are in Christ. Now, when sickness or, or anything tries to attack our body or any trouble in this world, we don't deny that it's there. Right. That's where a lot of times people, when they're learning the word of faith message, um, get confused. It, it's not faith in denial. It's faith and confession. And so, but we do do this. We do deny it's right to be there. Yes. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And so we can either say we're sick and we can either speak the problem or we can call things that are not naturally, physically, as though they were. In other words, we can speak God's word into the situation. And communion is a, another vehicle to bring all the healing, all the deliverance that belongs to us, bring it right into our life. That's why Jesus said, do it in remembrance of him. And so, and so we, we know that in the old covenant, they had healing. We have it in the, in the New Testament. They look forward to the cross and the promissory note of Jesus coming. We are looking back at the cross. Right. 
Here's another scripture. Psalms 107:19 in the New King James. Um, then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. This, of course, is the Old Testament saints, the Jews. It says that God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Now, the word that God sent to Israel came through the prophets. The prophets were specially appointed and anointed by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And he sent the word that would heal them. The word always included Jesus in one way, shape, or form uh, it, because he is the answer. Yes. And so, but he sent the word into their midst, as Leslie just read, he, and he healed them and delivered them from their destruction. No That's matter what, what the, the destruction is. No matter what. Yep. Now they needed times of deliverance. Well, we need to walk in deliverance too. You know, so many times people, um, they look at circumstances and, and, and it overwhelms them. And they think, well, I must not have a lot of faith if, I, if I'm in this circumstance right now. No, doesn't mean that you have, don't have a lot of faith. It means that, that you're a human being and, and you know what? Um, there's battles that have to go on. But, it, but you have the root in you. You have the word in you. So I encourage you, I just feel it in my spirit right now. Rise up, Freedom in Christ Church. Yes. Rise up and do what God has called you to do. Rise up and be uh, full of faith and full of victory in Jesus' name, okay? It's so important that we do that. Rise up. Do you agree with that? I do. Amen. It's the same way in your marriage. Uh-oh. <laughs> I wasn't planning on talking about that, but I felt it come up in my spirit. Have you ever been in a marriage where time got, times got tough, maybe in the beginning? How about as you were um, trying to um, blend families together? Uh-oh. I mean, these are real life things. You had battles, you had trials, you had tests, you had tribulations, but you know what? You did not quit. That's the main thing. Because you knew that inside of you, in the word of God and in your church was enough power to get you through. That's yes. the way it is with believing God for healing. Mm -hmm. Do not let go of your confession. Do not let go of your word. Don't go around telling people you're sick. Go around telling people you're well in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't talk about the mountain. Speak to the mountain. This is this is Leslie's um word of aggression. You say, well, sometimes people, they, they don't understand that when I say that. They think I'm lying. You're never lying when you speak the word of God. That's right. But you know what? Some people aren't going to understand this word of faith method, method of calling things that are not. You don't, you're not calling the natural things. You're calling things that are not as though they were uh, spiritually, speaking a spiritual answer into the problem. They're not going to understand that. So you don't have to share it with them. You don't even have to teach them, right? All you need to do is live by it. That's why the Bible says fellowship with like kind. Get a group of people that believe like you do and understand the word so we can draw off of this community field here. Yeah, because a lot of times, you know, you can watch how other people do, do it. You know, people that yeah. are maybe have been in it a little bit longer and learn. I mean, I learned so much from my husband and, you know, I have a sister-in-law that, you know, I watch how she does things and learns how to believe God for certain things. And, hey, you just got to follow suit, you know, get in there and see that, you know, God wants this. That's why he's given us his blueprint on how to do yes. it, you know. That's right. Because his word is true and he does not lie. That was a good word. That's, that's so true. And you know what? Every time you go through a test and every time you go through a trial and every time you go through a tribulation, you get better. better at it, yep. You get stronger. You get wiser. You get tougher. You get more resolve. You have a history now. The devil can't lie to you as much as he used to. You've actually seen God work now. You know, when I first started becoming, when I first became a pastor, Leslie remembers me saying this. She was talking about the other day. Um, I would 
in the pulpit, I would tell stories from Brother Hagen. I loved his stories. And then I would tell stories of my own dad, our founding mm -hmm. pastor, George Pogue Sr. And I said, I said, you know, one day I'm going to be able to stand up here and tell you my stories. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> of what God's done for me or how God's worked through me and through this church, uh, us together in our current time. Not so we can brag, but that we can encourage people. Yes. Now, when I first started out, I was a, I was a, a greenhorn, <laughs> a rookie. <laughs> I didn't have a whole lot of um, uh, experience, but I'm not a greenhorn anymore. I'm not a rookie anymore. And, and after, but what he had was enough to get me saved because it didn't take long after yeah. hearing the word. And that's why it's so important. It's all about the word. Yes, that's right. That's right. But after 17 years, we've built up uh, such a, a, res, a mm -hmm. resume. Yeah, train stories. yeah, I have my stories. I still talk about dad's stories. And I still talk about brother Hagen's stories. But I have ours too because that's important because God is faithful. And so um, the word that God sent Israel came through the prophets and they spoke of forgiveness and healing and deliverance that was available to them as a covenant people. But he sent his word, it says, and he healed them. And then another scripture, he, go ahead. Hebrews 1.1 1, 1 says, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, by whom also he made the worlds. Amen. So the old covenant, the promise of the coming of Jesus, and him being the deliverer, him being the one who rescues and sets free from, from the hand of the enemy, that promise was spoken of by the prophets. That's what that verse is saying. But in the new covenant, in our day, the fulfillment of the promise is revealed in Jesus Christ. And so now God speaks to us through Jesus, his life, what he actually did. Yes. So the prophets foretold of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus came and fulfilled the prophecies. And now he speaks to us directly through the one who came to rescue, to deliver and to set free. Yes. If you go to the tomb of Jesus Christ, he's not there. Amen to that. He is alive. He has risen. And you say, well, where did he go? Where did he where did he go? Well, he's at the right hand of the Father right now. He's your high priest. He's up there making intercession for you. So when you take your precious promises, you take what the word of God says, and you pray and you stand on them in faith, they go right through your high priest. And Jesus says to the Father, that's right, I paid for that, that's their privilege, they're your children, and, and the Father loves it. The Bible says God loves it when we remind him of his word. Do you ever think about that? Why, why does God want us to remind him of his word? Do you think that God forgets his word? <laughs> he don't forget anything. He wants to make sure that we don't forget it. Right. And so he likes to hear us. Mm -hmm. Repeat it back to him. Mm -hmm. So he knows we're on the right track. And that we're paying attention to what he has to say. Because what he says matters. Yes. And, and and another thing, you know, you don't have to sound like anybody else. You just, all you got to do is have the lines of communication open. That's what I tell people all the time. Just keep your lines of communication open. Talk to him just like you would your best friend, you know, throughout the day. And just let him know what's on your mind. You know, he knows anyhow, but he likes the fellowship because... Why do you think he did all this for us in the first place? He loves us and he wanted our fellowship. So we just got to keep him involved in everything that we do. That's true. That's true. You know, truly, the battleground is the mind. Yeah. So how you think and, mm -hmm. and what, what do you meditate on? And so this is to help you to shake that stinking thinking. Yeah. And start meditating on the word and start um, reminding yourself who you are in Christ. Remind yourself that, that, that you belong to a great church of faith. 
and that we are drawing off of that field of love and a field of faith that's been planted into each of us and we can pull right out there. Whatever we need, we're pulling it right out of the field and, and by prayer and faith and God's delivering us. And so don't get down, get get up on, on um, the things of God. And just know if you're not even in a church yet, God still loves you just the same as those who are in the church. You know, I found out that you don't need to go to church to get to heaven, which is really awesome because, you know, the ground's level at the cross. But you do grow spiritually when you get involved in a church and you learn how to love and you learn how to grow. And there's so many benefits. I mean, the Lord wants us to go to church and he says, do not fail to assemble ourselves together, especially in these last times. But you know what? I personally would be lost without my church family. Mm -hmm. um, I, I go there. I hear God speaking to me through my husband, you know, because I know he prays hard. You know, he studies to, you know, to show himself approved. And and I know my husband's heart. And those that go to our church also knows my husband's heart. And um, I just go to learn more and grow because I'll never know it all mm -hmm. until I get with the Lord. And then he's going to like reveal all this. I could just see it now, this big screen. But I just wanted to let you know. And you know what? You got to maybe maybe you're not going to church now. But guess what? Maybe you will here within a month or two. Who knows? I mean, we all come on at some point in time of our life. But it's good that you're taking the time to to listen to this message right here and know that God loves you. He loves each and every person that's listening out there. He's just so awesome and he's so personal. Yes. Amen. You know, I remember one time, a long time ago, I was just a young man. I heard my mom say, she said, I love my church family as much as I do my biological family. And I remember thinking, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> but you know what? These many years later, I know exactly yeah. how she feels. Yeah. We fall in love with one another. We do. And we know each other's struggles and we know how far we've come. And there's none of us that are the, the great somebody. Jesus is our great somebody. Yeah. But who we are in Christ and who we are together is special. It's special because Jesus made it possible. And so, yeah, we're mere human beings. But I tell you what, when we do and, and act and come together and, and, and unite our faith, like the Word of God says, we're powerful. Yeah. We are so powerful. And this Christian life is a fun life because I know prior to coming to church, things that I thought were fun really wasn't that fun after all because right now I wouldn't change anything about my life now for what I had in the in the past absolutely no Man. way and I have so many more friends now you know a lot of people once they graduate they don't see their friends anymore people that they hung out with in school and the reason why they got so close is because they gathered together all the time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now we gather together at church and that's where we get all of our friends and you know, things change inside of you and it's all because God is good and he wants what's good for us. And that's why, you know, we get together and we hang out. We do fun things together. We have picnics together and we just get to know one another. So it's just the same as back in the day when you were in school. Yes. Yes. It's so exciting to be involved mm -hmm. in a local church. Yes. So exciting. I mean, in our church, we got like three and four generations mm -hmm. of people I mean, I remember seeing little kids growing up, and now they got kids. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, that's how it's supposed to be. And, and God loves it. He loves it when his children get along and yes. when we dwell in unity. Now, I want to give it, you an example of, an old, of a scripture. Jesus refers back to the Old Testament, but he's actually talking about himself, and it has to do with deliverance and healing, unless he's going to read that. John 3.14 and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Yes. And so I remember reading that scripture one night, and, and I got offended. I said, wait a minute. Well, I don't like that this scripture is comparing Jesus to a serpent on a pole. And then it hit me. It's in red. <laughs> Jesus is saying that about himself. Remember the Old Testament, they looked to the cross, the, the fork, the coming of Jesus when he was to come, the promissory note, 
we look back. He's already come. And that's what this scripture is. And Numbers 21, 9, you can read Numbers 21 later, and you can see what uh, Jesus is talking about this account where they were, um, the Israelites um, had, were um, rebellious when they were out in the desert. God's trying to take them to the promised land. And they, um, they were rebellious and, and, and they started to um, um, suffer the penalty for sin and, and rebellion. And they were getting bit by snakes. Fiery serpents were biting them and they were getting sick and they were dying all over the place. And, and so Moses, the prophet, prayed and God said this. He said, I want you to put a serpent on a pole. A, a, a bronze serpent on, on a pole, which represents the fiery serpents. And when everyone, look, whoever will look at that serpent on the pole, they will be healed and they will be delivered. That was a type of Christ. Yeah. He is the serpent on the pole. He who knew no sin became sin. He never sinned, but Jesus became the curse. He became, uh, the curse was put on him so that we could be above the curse. And when it says um, that they looked at the serpent on the pole, the Amplified Bible says it this way, all who looked attentively, expectantly, steady absorbing gaze lived. And so they didn't just say, okay, there's a serpent on the pole, I did it. No, they were to look at it. They were to have a time of, of reflection. They were have to have a time of repentance. Mm -hmm. They were to have a time of reverence. And they were have a time of respect to understand that that serpent um, on the pole represents God's deliverance. Yeah. You see, somebody had to do it and only one person could do it and it was Jesus. And that's why Jesus said, he said that as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. How was Jesus lifted up? On the cross. Yeah. The curse was put on him so that we could be healed and we could be delivered and we could be set free. Yes. But you have to do the In same every thing. every area of our life. Every area. And we're going we're gonna to show that every area. And that's what communion is about. So all who looked attentively, expectantly, and steady, absorbing gaze, that's how we are to do it. We are to look to Jesus. Yes. We are to just pray and, and just, just meditate on him. Yes, Lord, you did die on the cross for my sins. Yes, you did um, mm. pay the price for my healing. Yes, you did do these things. Yes. Jesus said that the serpent on the pole in the wilderness that those people looked at that caused their healing represented him, was a symbol of him who was to come and do that. That's a beautiful story, isn't it? Yes. So much about the Bible is a, is a love story. It's a story of deliverance. Yes, it is. It's a story of, of new beginnings. It's a story of, uh, I was here at one time, but God took me to a whole nother place. Boy, do I got a story there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leslie and I, we tell people all the time, that are just coming out in the church and just trying this God way, we tell them, look, put it together. Yeah. You know, and before long, day by day, by day will be week by week, and then week by week will be month by month, yeah. and then before you know it, you'll have a year. And what's going to happen after a year? What's going to happen to them? They're going to look back, and they're going to say, look. Wow. <laughs> look how far God brought me. Yeah. Look yeah. what God did. See, it took you a while to get in your situation. And what God does is he steps you out of mm -hmm. it. But you got to keep looking to the cross. You got to keep looking to Jesus. You got to keep um, uh, being humble and, and reverent and, and um, honor your God. And as you do, it frees him up to move in, in ways that you could never, ever move. And, and just know this, nothing will ever separate you from the love of God. Nothing, not even a drink. You know what I mean? People think that, oh, I can't do that church thing. I can't live, live that church life. Well, let me just tell you, when I came into the church, I, I definitely was rough around the edges. I mean, that's why God says, come as you are. You don't have to already be fixed already have it going on and get together no 
we learn how to live that way, yes. you know? And yes. it's just coming together and getting around other people that's all his. We all, I mean, why does anybody go to church? Because they love God, they want to learn about God, and they want new friends. And you know what? The Lord, he just works out all that stuff. He works it out. He does. He's God. And we're not. And we're not. <laughs> <laughs> he works it out. Come on. The God that put the stars and the moon in the sky and, and created every living thing, he's got you. He understands you. He knows you better than you know yourself. Yep. And so what Leslie's saying is so important. People think, well, I could never live that church life. I could never. Well, what do you mean by that? You can't put your socks and shoes on and some and some clothes and go to church and, and just fellowship and, 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 and keep doing it and keep reading the word and keep... Um, Finding out what God says to do and applying it to your life, that's all that means. All I got to say is church is not boring. At least our church isn't boring. No. I've been to a lot of churches, and I have been bored in church. But you know what? You just ask the Lord, hey, you know, and just because there's a lot of people out there, they don't, they feel they don't know how to pray. But here's, here's it. Hey, Lord, you know, I was thinking about going to church could you just lead me and guide me to a right church? Send someone across my path, maybe. Someone that will speak something into me. That's all it is. That's talking to God. That's saying, hey, God, you know, and that's your beginnings. But then when you get in and you start learning, because I'm telling you, the Lord is just so cool how he does everything. Things just start changing in you. Your desires change. I know my desires changed big time. Because I went from liking to drink alcohol and liking to be Miss Party Hardy to, hey, I'm, you know, Sister Sonona over there, you know, she's singing this beautiful song and it's touching my heart and it makes me cry sometimes, you know. And, hey, that sister over there, or that brother over there, you know, they told me, hey, it was good to see you today. All these things. And then it's like, wow, you know, I'm getting more out of church than I am out there with other people that, you know, all of like mine just wanting to do one thing and it's not, it, it leaves you unfulfilled inside. When you come into church, then you start wanting to read more. You want to start hearing more. And honestly, I feel he's the best pastor I've ever heard because he's so interesting and he's just good. He's good at breaking it down. You know, I can read some of these scriptures here in the King James Version, but then he does the breakdown. And that's where you get it and you understand it. And it's like, cool. But the more you do it and the more you do it, you just learn more. So that's just kind of how it is. Yeah. Yeah. The things in the world that we get into are the band-aids. Yeah. And, and sort of like a tr treatment for the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the cure. Yes. He's the cure. He's the one who makes us whole. He's the one that brings us joy from within mm -hmm. that the world doesn't know anything about. He's the one that gives us the peace that yes. guards our heart and Amen. our mind. He's the one that brings fulfillment because nobody can be fulfilled in this life until God fills that hole in them. Mm -hmm. It's a God-shaped hole. And we encourage you. We weren't planning on going this way, but somebody must have needed to hear mm -hmm. it. You are worthy yes. of, of living for God. And, and you are wanted by God. He loves you. And, and he has us way outside of our box just to talk to you. <laughs> and so you ought to be happy about that. You know, we don't do this because we want to be on Facebook Live. And, and, and do, we do these things because the, the, we, we are compelled. There's a burden and a compelling inside of us to, to let people know. And Satan will lie to you. I'm telling you. I mean, he is real. He'll tell you nobody cares about you. You know, you're just so-and-so or whatever. And that's not true because everybody's got the goods inside. Trust me. We all have need of one another. And I know I said that the last time as well. Every single person on the face of the earth is important to God. He loves everyone and he is... What he did on the cross for us, he did it for all of us. But Amen. even if it would have only been just for you, he would have done it because that's just how he is. He's an awesome God, and, and our little minds can't even figure all that stuff out. But that's okay because we don't have to worry about it. We just we just do our little part, and yeah. we change our little world that we're in, you know, right here. So this is yeah. awesome, and the more of you that joins in, the better. You just got to keep it 
real yep. and join together with brothers and sisters yes. and, and, and do the, the t things that God asked us to do Yes, and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We're not talking about being robots here. Right. We, we are immune to. Uh, and you say, well, Pastor John, do you ever get afraid? Yeah, I, I do get afraid. But when, I, when that fear comes, I'm not comfortable with it. Right. I recognize it as being an enemy of Satan coming to strip me of my faith mm -hmm. and get me to say the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Because I know that the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. Yes. And I'm not yielding my tongue to Satan. I'm not reinforcing anything. And so what do I do with the fear? I get into the presence of God. I pray. I pray in the spirit. I get the word in me. And last night I went to bed and I, I was listening to Kenneth Hagin all night long while I was sleeping, waking up and hearing Kenneth Hagin. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's um, things we do when these things come on us. And so just so you know that. You, you you're natural and you're and, and you're weak in the natural but in in the spiritual things you're a giant yeah you just got to realize these things now the next scripture that we want to talk about is isaiah 53 this is hundreds and hundreds of years before jesus came isaiah talks about the redemptive work of christ or jesus dying on the cross for the sins of the world but he mentions not only the sins of the world, he mentions their sickness and disease is what Jesus died for too. And I'll show you that, but go ahead, Leslie. It says, looking forward, Isaiah prophesied of the coming Messiah and of redemption. So in Isaiah 53, verse 4, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did not esteem, esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Powerful, powerful verse. Yes. Now, this is the King James Version. And this is what Leslie was saying. If you're not used to this type of version, it probably a lot of that probably went over your head. That's okay. That's why we're here. Yep. And I just want to break it down for you a little bit because don't give up on the word. That's right. Just stick in there and, and, and seek. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, when you seek me, you'll find me. Yes. The Bible says whatever you get put into the word will be measured back to you. And so let's just break this down. And so Isaiah is saying that Jesus born our griefs and carried our sorrows on the cross. He bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. We know that the Old Testament was written in the Hebrew. And so we can look up these Hebrew words and, and uh, you can say, well, I don't want to be looking up no Hebrew words. I'll do it for you for these circum these situations. I'm, I'm, I'll do it for you. We'll do it for you, right? Yes. And so, but when it says that he, he bore our griefs, the grief, the word grief in the Hebrew is the Hebrew word choli, C-H-O-L-I. And it means to be weak. These are all the things that he bore. Now, when it says he bore, it means he carried, he lifted, he took away. That's what that word bore means. On the, he, he, on the cross, when he died on the cross, he lifted, he carried it away. He took it on himself. Mm -hmm. Our weakness, when we're worn down in strength, yep. when we're sick, when we're in pain, when we are feeble, uh, weakness of mind, from great concern and grief, he paid for that on the cross. When he died on the cross, he bore it. In other words, it was all put on him so that you don't have to deal with it anymore. Yes. And how do you get that into your life? You got to know about it. You got to um, hear the word, get it in your spirit and start believing God for it. And yes. communion, we're here to help you. We're here to help you appropriate this into your life through communion i'll tell you what many many healings are going to take place today yes amen. i promise you that yep and so um so that's what that means and it's also the plural of, of the word grief totally means um sickness and disease he took that on the cross yes and so um when it says that um he also that he carried our sorrows 
The word carry means this, to bear, um, to, to take something by carrying it so that others might be free from it. Free from it. Take the full load. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good, I'm glad you pointed that out. Take the full load. Yes. It's like if Leslie and I are walking up the, uh, a big mountain and we're camping and, and she has a big 50 pound uh, backpack on. And she's starting to labor and labor, and I feel pretty good if I say, let me take the backpack a while. And I take that backpack, take that whole burden, that whole load off of her, she's free. And, and, and it's off of her. That's what Jesus did. He took it all. Yes. He, it says that he carried, mm -hmm. where's that at? He carried our mm -hmm. sorrows. Now, sorrows in the Greek is the word kabal, C-A-B-A-L. It means, um, I'm sorry, wait, sorrows, I'm sorry, in the Hebrew, is the word makab, M-A-C-O-B. It means to have pain. He carried that. Got any pain in your body? Thank God right now that he's carried that for you. Yes, when did he carry it for you? On the cross. On the cross. Well, how long ago was that? 2,000. 2,000 years ago. Yeah. That means it's a right and it's a privilege. That's why Jesus said, as often as you do communion, do it in remembrance of me. He doesn't want you to forget what he's done. Right. So to be sore, to be in a state of great suffering and grief, grief with pain of body, to be in great pain, to be very sore in body and sorrow, Jesus carried it all. Yes. This is straight from the word of God. Mm -hmm. This is what we are to stand on. Now do you see why when our bodies are attacked or when things come in our life, we don't sit back and take it and say, well, I guess, I guess um, God is trying to teach us something from this. I guess we'll be better people from it. No, Jesus said the dividing line in John 10, 10, he said it was the thief yes. that steals, kills, and destroys. Right. He said, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. We recognize it as being an attack of the enemy, mm -hmm. and we know who we are in Christ. We know that Jesus carried it. He bore it. He took all these things on himself on the cross. Amen. And so we can be set free. That's the good news, isn't it? Yes. I missed the scripture over here. Let's see, read this Galatians yeah. 3.13. Okay. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law or sickness, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That's why he said, I'm that serpent on the pole in the wilderness in Moses' day was a sim symbol of me. What I would do. Yeah. Now, I don't want, now, if you hear this message for the first time, I just want to make sure you understand what we're saying. Mm-hmm. Jesus is the only human being that ever lived and never sinned. Yes, amen. He never sinned, but our sin was put on him. The sickness and the disease and the results of sin and the curse was put on him so that we could be free of it. Yes. And so that's what we are saying because we needed a savior. We need a redeemer. And he is all those things. Amen. So maybe yeah, we could go back to that. And I thought about that. So Jesus took it all. And now in 1 Peter 2.24, Peter is quoting Isaiah. He's quoting this redemptive scripture, this purchasing scripture in Isaiah 53. This is after Jesus died on the cross. This is mm -hmm. 30, 40 years afterwards. And now Peter's looking back. And, and, and he changes the word when uh, Isaiah said, by his stripes we are healed, looking towards the promissory of, note of Jesus coming. Peter changes that word are to were. Yes. Were is past tense. Why did he change that word? He's looking back. Mm -hmm. Jesus came. He came and he did it. Now remember, the Old Testament saints, their sins were covered. Mm -hmm. New Testament saints, to be born again means that your sins are cleansed. 
after Jesus rose. After Jesus yeah. died on the cross and rose, your sins are not covered anymore. You are cleansed. Yes, amen. You are a spiritual renewal. That's a whole other subject, but just so you know that. It's a big deal to be born in this covenant that we are in. Trust yes. me. No wonder the Bible says that our covenant is established on better and more precious promises yes. than the old covenant. So listen to what Peter said here in 1 Peter 2. Verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Were. Past tense, right? Yep. You don't even have to be an English major to understand that one. <laughs> And if people don't believe this, they got to go back in the scripture and ask themselves why Isaiah said we are and why Peter said we were. And then if they're honest with themselves and if they open their hearts up to the scripture, they will see Peter or Isaiah was looking towards the cross, towards the coming of Jesus. He was the lamb that was slain since before the foundation of the world. He was the promissory note. Peter looked back post era if you will so so basically for those who may not know and the bible may be new to them anything in the old testament is before jesus died on the cross anything after starting in matthew mark luke and john that's after that's jesus's life here mm -hmm. so and then, and then it talks about him going yes. you know so it's their account yes. so it's pretty awesome yes. the the new testament or the uh the new, new Covenant, the New Testament, is the fulfillment yeah. of the Old Covenant. Covenant Covenant means Testament. So if you see Old Testament, it means Covenant. Or old or New Testament means Covenant. So the New is the fulfillment of the Old. In the, in the Old Covenant, they talked about Jesus coming. They prophesied mm -hmm. him. He was in there in symbols and like the serpent on the pole and all these things. And here Jesus comes and he fulfills everything written about him so it, it it's intertwined yeah you can't separate the two it's a perfect blend only only something like that could have been done by god himself and, and the holy spirit is the author of of the bible yeah and the awesome thing is now that um jesus died and rose again is now we have the holy spirit living inside of us they didn't have that back mm -hmm. back then they didn't have that we got the new promise so yes. And good that's news. awesome. Good news. That's why the, the gospel is called the good news. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Yeah. Gospel is good news. I know some people preach it or <laughs> teach it or carry it around like it's a bad news. Mm -hmm. No, it's good news. It's, it's a story of redemption. It's a story of love. It's a story of, of forgiveness. It's a story of victory. It's a story of triumph. It's mm -hmm. a story of, of I can take the word, what the word of God says, and I can believe him, and I can fight the good fight of faith, and I can change any circumstance. That's right. In Jesus' name, you Amen. can. You can. Here's another scripture that talks about healing and deliverance and forgiveness of sin, all being in the redemptive work of Christ or when he died on the cross. Yep, healing belongs to us just as salvation belongs to us. In Psalms 103, verse 2 through 4, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives us all thine iniquities or sins, who heals all thy diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Yes, there it's in there. Forget not mm -hmm. all his benefits. benefits. What do people do? They forget yeah. all of the benefits that Jesus has for us. That's why Jesus said, as often as you do communion, do it in remembrance of me. He doesn't yeah. want you to forget. That was an awesome scripture that, right. that Leslie read. He says that he forgives all our iniquities, all of our sin. Mm -hmm. He heals all of our diseases. Yeah. When did he heal all of our diseases? On the cross. Mm -hmm. They were looking for the cross, towards the cross, the promissory note. We are looking back. 
The redemptive work of Christ has brought us healing and brought us forgiveness of sin. The whole man has been delivered in that. That's right? why it's so important to get into a church and learn these things because most people out there that don't go to church or anything, they're really not going to understand the scripture. I mean, they can read it and stuff, but I mean, sometimes you just need a little bit more explaining. I like the explaining. Yeah. So that's my yeah. favorite part because that's how I've learned to understand some of the big words that are in the yeah. Bible. And now it's like, wow, you know, it's just everyday life now. I totally get it. Yeah. And it's awesome once you actually get it and you know it. That's right. If you look at the ministry of Jesus mm -hmm. in in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is about the life of Jesus. You can read about his ministry and all that he did. He always taught first. He taught and then he demonstrated what he taught. God confirms the word with signs following. And so teaching is necessary. Jesus would all, he, he was the greatest teacher that ever lived. And as he taught, the people became inspired, faith welled up in them, and then they went ahead and received from him. Yes. They honored him because they believed his word. It's the same today. Okay, do you have your communion elements ready? We're getting ready to take communion. And so um, the first thing that we'll do is, is the wafer or the bread. And uh, so the bread, Jesus said this in, in Luke twenty two nineteen. It says, and he took bread and gave thanks and broke it. He broke it because his body was broken, right, for us. And he gave it to them. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you or broken for you. Do this in remembrance of you. This is the Lord's Supper, the, the Last Supper. This is what he did right before he went to the cross. And he's demonstrating. One last demonstration lesson. Of full, full of some symbolism here. And he's saying, look, take that bread and break it. And remember that my body is broken for you. Amen. So take the bread and break it and you may eat it. And now we're going to pray. But I just want you to take a minute. Think about anything in your body that you need. Think about anybody in our church family or anybody in your family, because they're all covered in this, they, that are in need of, of a healing. We're going to bring them all in, right? We're drawn from this field, this field of, of God's love in our heart for one another and the faith that's been poured into us. Think about any kind of sickness, any kind of disease, any kind of depression in the mind, yeah. anything. Just, 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 um, just think about it and, and put that out there. And, and believe God right now as I pray that his healing is flooding your body and flooding the lives of these people Amen. in Jesus' name. Yes. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for the precious body of Jesus that was broken for yes. us. I thank you, Lord, 2,000 years ago, Jesus died a terrible death on the cross so that we could be healed and we could be delivered and we could be set free from any sickness, any disease, any virus, any, any, mm. anything, Lord. No cancer, no tumor can, can overcome this prayer, Lord God. So, Father, we speak healing in the name of Jesus yes. into our body. Mm. We speak healing into our church body. And, Lord, we speak healing into all those people that are represented in our heart that we're thinking of right now that need healing in one way, shape, or, or another, Lord. Yes, Lord. We, we, we believe it, Lord. We thank you for healing their bodies. Thank you for rising them up, Lord God, and, and delivering them supernaturally. Yes. For Jesus is our healer. Thank you. And this is a precious, precious thing to be able to take a minute and to just thank you. And to, yes. to believe you for such a wonderful gift that we have. Thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And so now, thank God for your healing. Thank God for the healing of the people that you're standing in for. Don't be moved by what you see. Don't be moved by what you feel. Mm -hmm. They're just natural yes. things. Yep. Be moved by what the word of God says. And you hold in there. 
and by his stripes you were healed. Amen. And you keep pounding that in and you keep celebrating that and you keep rejoicing in that and you keep praising God and you keep thanking him and say, I know who I am. Yes. And I know what my God has done for me. And you'll walk that victory. You'll walk it. That, that healing will manifest in your body. It already has. It already has in Jesus' name. Amen? Yes. And now the next part is the uh, grape juice. And uh, this, of course, represents the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for each and every one of us. And it says in Luke twenty two twenty. This cup of the new covenant is my blood, which is shed for you. His blood yeah. that was shed for us. Yeah, he took it at the last supper. Yeah. It was shed for us. He died on that cross. Yes. That was the blood of God dripping down that cross that day, dripping down that body. You know, the Bible says without the shedding of blood. There's no forgiveness of sin. And all human beings, we're, we're born into sin. Mm -hmm. We're born into a fallen race of people through the sin of Adam and Eve. But Jesus got in here in a very uh, genius way. Mm -hmm. He had a natural mother, true, but he did not have a natural father. He was conceived in the womb of Mary by the Holy Spirit. And when he was born, he was every bit as human as we are, but he was God veiled in the flesh. But he did not have a natural father, and, and, the, and the father determines the blood type of the child. And so he, he, he did not have contaminated blood. He had supernatural God blood <laughs> flowing through his, his vessels. And he was pure. 33 yeah. and a half years, he never sinned because he had to be the spotless lamb to take away the sins of the world. He did that. And so I want you to let go. I, I just want to take a minute here and I, and I just want you to give whatever's going on in your life, give it to the Father. If you haven't been um, um, conducting yourself the way that you feel that you should and, and you know you could do better and you feel like you've, you, you just need to get a closer walk with the Lord... Those, those are good feelings. Yeah. But a lot of people don't know what to do. Don't get in condemnation. Condemnation is what you're not to get in. Right. Condemnation means you're separated from God by sin. No, Jesus took care of that. He paid the price for your sin. But conviction is okay. Yeah. If we say, you know what? I want to be better. I can do better. You know, we all struggle with our flesh. We all struggle with our mind. We all let the old man get up there sometimes. The Bible says, take off the old man and put on the new man. Yeah. And then sometimes we can get in the ruts. Am I the only one? No. And sometimes we can let things go and we can maybe not, not be what we know that God can call called us to be. All these things go to God right now. Just give it to him. Jesus said, remember me. Don't ever, ever go from God. You run to God. So just give it a couple uh, seconds here and just, just give it to the Lord. Okay, now drink of, the, of your juice. Let's pray. Father, Thank you for the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that as born-again believers, our sins have been cleansed. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. But I thank you, Father, that Jesus said that we are to do this in remembrance of him. We are to not to let the, the sinful ways of the world dominate our life because the word of God says, whoever you serve is your master. And we're not to be... The sin and the ways of the world is not to be our master. We're not to be in bondage. We were set free from all of that. So, Father, we release all of that stuff and we, we reject those things, Lord God, that would hinder us. And we lay down that weight that so easily besets us, Lord. And we come to a throne of grace. 
and we, we partake of communion and we thank you, Lord, for completely um, cleansing our, our minds and our body and our, yes. and our whole being, Lord God, of all these things, Lord God. And we purpose in our heart, Lord, to live for you and to press thank into you, you like never before, to take chances, Lord, to step outside of the box and to, to glorify you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I love communion. Communion is so uh, awesome. And so uh, before we close here, we are going to um, pray over the tithes and offerings. And um, Leslie, do you want to let them know about this stuff sure. here? Sure. So um, the church will continue to be open every day for walk-in prayer or the opportunity if you would like to bring your tithes and offerings into the church. Um, those of you that know, you know we have cabinets in the back. You can pray over your offerings and um, put it in there. Or if you'd like, you can mail it in. Our address is 4042 Sycamore Grove Road, Chambersburg, PA, 17202. Or if you'd rather, you can um, send it in through PayPal. And you just send it in to Freedom in Christ Church at yahoo.com. And then you would just select the um, friends and family. So that way nobody gets charged any fees. Yes. And, and a couple of things before we um, pray over the offering is, um, of course, we are in our 42nd year of faithful service. And um, this coming week here, I believe that they are going to start breaking ground on the building, the Gymnasium Fellowship Center. Next week, uh, Brother George Pogue Jr. and Sister Lisa Pogue will be um, filming us in on that. Let yes. us know what's going to happen. And I'm really, really excited. I know Leslie's excited too. Very. And uh, um, I know one thing. Our God will make a way. Yes, and we're not going to um, allow circumstances to um, deter us. God put it in our heart to build this building. And we're going to build it. And uh, unless the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. That's right. And so... Um, but you can give towards our building fund and be a part of this, and mm -hmm. we'd appreciate that. Um, I wanted to let you know this this year we did uh, our second year of summer camp. Yep. And right through the um, this coronavirus, we were blessed, and we were so a we were able to provide a place for those children first through sixth grade to to go every day. Parents needed to work. They needed to keep on carrying on yeah. life. And we did all the safety measures that we could do in the natural. And God blessed us. And we were able to do it the whole summer long. About 20 or so children, I think yeah. it was. 20 or so children. And and uh, we had a great summer. Um, some of those children and even the helpers. We had a lot of teenagers helping and then a lot of adults helping. It was a good team effort. But, but some of those people even got filled with the Spirit. Yes. And had that wonderful gift brought about in the camp. And so in our camp, they hear the word every day. Every day they get the word in them. And that's the most important part. And there's fellowship there. So um, it was our second year. Uh, Pastor Dane said, and Sister Anaya basically say, that the only thing that really, really holds us back is our space. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? <laughs> We're doubling our size. Yes, we are. And so double size double the amount of children and so we're praying that we can get 40 and uh wow what a wonderful thing and then what, what we'd like to do also is eventually have after school programs just been in my heart you know one thing the lord told me he said look he said don't do something because someone else does something mm -hmm. and he said this he said don't do something just because you can he said you do what i asked you to do yeah you find your niche, you find your place, you find your purpose. God's the one that puts all this stuff together. Yeah, He's the one that, that tells which church to do what. There's a lot of great churches in this community. Yes. But we want to do our part too. And so these after-school programs have really been in my heart because a lot of times when children get home from school, they're home before their parents, sometimes an hour, two hours or more. And that's a time where things can happen. And, and uh, so we'd love for them to come to the to the, our new gymnasium to come to the church and we can give them a snack and we can help them with their homework. I just can't do the new math, but maybe someone else can. You know, if they had a bad day, we can pray for them. 
And then we can give them a little Bible lesson and then they can run in the gym and play and just shake it off. We can get them all wore out for you parents so when you come home, they're not so wired up. That's and, right. Uh, and also, the snack we give them, we won't ruin their supper either. That's right. And they'll give them something healthy. <laughs> but, you know, we're, we're all to be in this together. It's never the desire of anybody in our church that works with children. We know we never take the place of the parent. Right. We are very pro-parent. Yes. We are here to help you and to assist you. And so I'm so excited about this building and, and these things. And then um, our missions mm -hmm. that we go to is uh, in Bogota, Colombia. And Brother Jay and Sister Darlene Fisher have... have um, um, led those trips for many, many years. Yeah. I've been over there maybe four times. And Leslie's been over there a couple times. And yeah, you've probably been there more than that. Yeah, maybe more than that. And um, there's uh, one one year we took a, a whole group of teenagers. It was a fun, exciting time. And thirteen. Thirteen teenagers and went. Six adults, I think. Six adults, mm -hmm. and then we've taken other trips with just adults. So we go over there as a team. We're, we're hooked up with Pastor John Romick over uh, Rama School, Columbia, and uh, we get in there and, and, and uh, he helps us he, with food and lodging. And of course we, we pay, the, you know, we pay whatever it needed to be done, but, but it's nice to have contacts over there. Yes. And so we have missions in Bogota, the Pantry of Hope, um, Sister Alma Walters, wonderful job, her and her ladies. Um, we help people with food that, that need food and um, prayer and, and other areas. This is one that's sort of like a mystery in the church. I mean, they know it's there, but, mm -hmm. but we've decided that we're not going to get too much involved in all that that does because there's privacy issues there. Yeah. But let's just say we're not set up to um, meet the needs of the masses. Right. But the people we do help, we give them a lot of love and a yeah. lot of care, and we do the best we can do. And then if they don't have a church, they can come to ours. Yep. And uh, we were there for them too. That's right. Uh, then we got the CD and DVD mm -hmm. ministry also. Yeah. Um, so Sister uh, Denise Musgrave, she is a total blessing in this area. She helps us out. She records our services. Um, she gets them out on CDs and DVDs, however you would want it. Um, we don't have a charge for that. And we tell everyone, you know, if you want to sign up for a message, there's a clipboard in the back. Um, so there's no charge for any of that. Um, but yep. So that ministry there, I mean, everything is free. We don't charge for anything there, but a lot of people like to give into that mm -hmm. as well, because you know, there's the camera, there's the overhead projector and, and all of that and our screen and all kinds of supplies. I mean, there's lots of ink that gets used for that and we got to buy the CDs and sometimes my honey gets on where he'll do a uh, three and four part series, you know, and there's a lot of work involved in that. So we have the CD duplicator and everything. But that's just another area if you would like to give. Yeah, and if you can think about it, you know, share this video um, and uh, let people know that they can get us on YouTube. Yes. As well, we have our own YouTube channel mm -hmm. and we're, it's all to get the word out. And you just, you just uh, go to YouTube and look up Freedom in Christ Church in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, and then look for our dove symbol. Yeah. That's the main thing. It's a round circle. It's it's blue looking with the dove with an olive um, branch in its mouth. Yes, yes. And so there's many things that we do, and um, we're a lighthouse in this community. Um, God has supplied all of our needs yes he has according to his riches and glory by christ jesus and so i don't see any reason why that to, that would stop <laughs> and so um we're, we're going to do this together and uh someone was saying the other day about the, the building and, and all that's going on i said well i'm not that's god's issue yeah it's, it's not mine he's gonna build it he's the supplier I just trust him for it. We trust him. And so he always makes a way where there yes, seems to be no way. And then I like what Jesus said in Matthew 6, 20. He gives us a choice. He says, store up your treasures in heaven where the moth nor rust destroys. Yes. And where thieves do not break in and steal. Then he says this, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. 
So this is an opportunity through giving that we give in, in this way, we give in serving and love and, and, and becoming a, it costs us something to become part of a team, right? Yeah. In a family, but the benefits are tr through the roof. But Jesus said, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is going to be. And so through our giving, it, it allows us to, to um, have our treasure be in, in the kingdom of God and the things of God. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be added mm -hmm. unto you. And so um, sometimes uh, when we're out and about, um, people like to talk to us about church and things and the churches they used to go to. And, and um, I, I honestly, I think probably without fail or more times than not, they, people, um, they start telling me about the church that they used to went to, used, used to mm -hmm. go to. And, uh, um, and, but, and then they say, you know, I, I think the church was after my money. They were just after my money or they were just this or that. And, and, I, and I think to myself, well, what if it was God looking for their heart? Yeah. What if it was God showing them where to put their treasure? Because where your treasure is, there's your heart. And, and so um, sometimes local churches are, are, are um, it's tough because we're, we're, we're daily grinding it out. We're the foot soldiers. Yeah. We're not the flashy TV ministries, you know, um, flying overhead and doing all these things. They're wonderful and they're needed too, but we're the, we're the um, people that you can shake hands with and rub shoulders with. We're the pastor and pastor's wife that knows your name. Yes. And, and so, um, so we get, we were really close. And, and you see, maybe you see um, things that um, I hope, I hope not, I mean, I hope you don't think too bad of me, but you'll see eventually that I am human and everything I have is by the grace of God, you know, and, and, and Leslie. And so the people, you know, they start to get hard on their churches and things. And that's not how it's supposed to be. You know, we're, the, the church is to be our treasure and we're to pour our heart into it. And as we do, we pull out of that big field of love and faith that we've sown into. It's a community garden is what it is. Yeah. And so, um, but so I hope this is, has um, uh, encouraged you and, and uh, we're gonna pray yes. over the offerings. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that we don't give because um, we have to. We don't give because we're manipulated to give. We don't give, Lord, uh, because we feel bad and or any reason. We give because we love you. Yes. And we give because we believe that Freedom in Christ Church is called yes. by you for such a time as this. It is a, a, a ministry, a lighthouse um, that you have put in this area to bring them in and, and build them up and, and to make them wise and to shine bright with the love of God and, and, and the word of God. And so, Father, that's what we've done. We've been faithful to do that. And so, Lord, I thank you for supplying all of our needs, the needs of the church and the needs of the people. And now, Lord, we give, and we give with a glad heart, for you love a cheerful giver. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, I think this closes the service. Yeah. Um, this was awesome. It and was. Thanks for joining us. And don't forget, we'll be back on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. Wednesday evening. We're trying to get some calls out there, trying to keep track of people. But, um, hey, don't wait for us to call you. You call us. If one more person tells me I don't want to bother you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but it does hurt my heart. How could you ever bother me? You know, you're what it's all about. We love you guys. You're the reason why I'm doing this right now. Yeah. You know, I have never felt the need to be seen. <laughs> ever. You can check my history. Talk to anybody that knows me. I'm doing it because God said, get out there, boy. <laughs> I put something in you and you can help someone. Unless he's doing it for the same reasons. You're never a bo bother. There's nobody more important than you. But help us out. If you're struggling or you need prayer or you have any kind of questions, just contact us too. I see all the loves. Thank you, everybody, for all yep. the loves too. And uh, you know what? And don't forget to check on your other brothers and sisters yes. as well. Yeah. It takes all of us doing this together, you know, yep. so we don't forget anybody. Whatever you're going through, 
this too will pass. Yes. And we'll come through on the other side. Yes, God bless you and we love you. Yeah. Bye-bye.